G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video which got a lot of traction um, where I went back and I reversed every single close game, reversed the result in season 2024 to ultimately see the impact on the AFL ladder. If you haven't seen that yet, I won't spoil it, but it definitely had some very interesting outcomes. So if you wanna see that as well, I'll leave a link to that in the top right corner of this video. Now I did get a number of requests that it would be interesting to see 2023 doing the exact same thing, going back through 2023 season, every close game and reversing the actual winner of that game. Now, the first thing that comes to mind and why 2023 might be an interesting one was because of the narrative around Collingwood and their ability to win close games. Now, nobody's trying to take Collingwood's premiership away from them or anything like that, but it would be interesting to map out the impact that their ability to win these close games had on their ability to win the premiership ultimately. So they're going to be one of the teams I'm watching in this, but it'll be interesting to see if it pops up any other interesting results. So we're going to crack into 2023 season, go through every game and see which games were close. One thing I might change though is in the last video, I simply reverse the, the margin. So if a team won by five points, I had them losing by five points. In this video, what I might do is just plus six to the losing team. So one extra goal to the team that lost, which might produce draws in games that were decided by exactly six points. I suppose this way is a little bit more realistic. Also in doing this analysis, I came across another very interesting stat. 57% of the people who have been watching the True Footy YouTube channel over the last month haven't actually subscribed. So if you wanna see plenty more football content and if you are someone who has watched True Footy before, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel to help it grow. All right, here we are on Squiggle. Um, so yeah, Squiggle allows you to go back to previous seasons and amend different results. So feast your eyes on the ladder there. Um, we can cross reference it and at the end, I will go back and compare the main differences to the ladder. Again, I, I mentioned Collingwood and, and how high they finish will be interesting here. The other one will be interesting will be, do North Melbourne end up with pick one to get highly read? I suspect that might be the case. Okay, so we're looking for margins of six points or less at this point, and the opening round draw, um, it doesn't qualify. So I'm gonna leave that one as a draw, and then you go down to here, round one, uh, that's not opening round, but the opening round of the season, North Melbourne defeated West Coast by five points. So if we add one extra goal to West Coast, they now win by one point. Goodbye, Harley Reid, perhaps. So I'm aware that I missed one or two in the last video, and I do apologize for that. It is actually very easy to do when you're going through result by result, but I'm going to do my best here. So we move down, we've got a 15 point there, an eight point there, an 11 point there. Maybe there weren't a lot of thrillers early. Here we go, okay, so North Melbourne again. Like I said, they won this game by one point. So their first two wins of the season in 2023 are now reversed, and we'll give this game to Fremantle by five points, allowing for one extra goal. There's a few close games here. GWS versus Carlton was 10 points. Um, I suppose you have to go down a fair bit before we get to the next absolute thriller. Aha, Richmond and the Western Bulldogs. The Bulldogs prevailing by five points. Let's feast our eyes on that. And that is now a one point victory to the Richmond Football Club. Uh, this is the Sydney versus Port Adelaide game where Florence um, thought he kicked a goal but instead it was saved. So let's just say in this alternate universe, the Sydney Swans prevail with that kick going through and they win by four points, wasn't it? So let's just feast our eyes on the ladder. Um, I've got the ladder open here. So Sydney's up into six. Where did they finish last year? Eighth. So, so far so good for the Swans. Other than that, not a whole heap of movement at the top, but we do see 17th and 18th, a big gap there now. Uh, let's keep moving through. So far, Collingwood are relatively untouched. However, I've just noticed here and here. So we got a couple games first. We'll get to Collingwood in a second, but GWS versus Hawthorne. Hawthorne now win this game by four points. And here, Collingwood versus St Kilda. This was in gather round. It must've been, I remember this game. And now we actually have to give this one a draw. So Collingwood actually only lose two premiership points from this result. Let's make that a draw. And Collingwood's still sitting pretty, but there's still plenty of the season left to go. Uh, ha, uh, Hawthorne here again prevails. So Hawthorne might be a little bit of a beneficiary. We'll wait and see, but they actually beat Adelaide here by three points at York Park or Utahs as it's now called, I think. So St Kilda just miss out on that result because that is seven points, but we do have the Sydney Derby where um, the Swans in this case actually win it by five points. So yeah, here you can see the Swans up into fifth. We'll see if that position holds. West Coast versus Carlton. Ooh, that's just outside the six point range. <laughs> oh God, I do not miss season 2023. Here we go. This is one of the, another, uh, one of the other Collingwood wins that we now actually have to give to the Adelaide Crows. So Adelaide prevail 
in this game by five points. It will actually be interesting as a side note to see how far up Adelaide go because, um, you know, we remember how that season ended with that game against Sydney. So Adelaide here win by five points. And we've actually seen a change in the minor premier. That's probably to be expected. But so far, so good for Collingwood. Gold Coast get one over here on the Ds. They actually win this game by one point. Uh, now, Port Adelaide move ahead of Melbourne. Gold Coast pretty much in the same spot. Port Adelaide versus Essendon. Now, I vaguely remember this game. Did Essendon have a lot more inside 50s, but Port Adelaide's defense was too good? I think that might have been the case. But either way, we need to give this game to Essendon by one point. Essendon into the eight. Would you look at that? That is quite a uh, quite a movement up just from one win. Collingwood, that was not a close game there, so they survive. They're the ones I'm really watching out for in this particular video. Port Adelaide versus Melbourne. We've got down here, and uh, now he needs... To, Melbourne actually get one back. They've, they've lost a couple of wins in this video so far. Sydney, now up into fourth on the basis of that. Jeez, the Swans left a few on the board, and maybe, maybe it was a foreshadowing for what was to come in season 2024 because they had a great season up until, you know, the grand final. North Melbourne get one back here. This is an important win. Uh, was this the, I remember this, was this like the late 50 interchange infringement or something like that? Let's say that North Melbourne actually win this game. Essendon defeat Richmond by five points on this particular dream time. Oh, sorry, no, Richmond beat Essendon. I'm glad I <laughs> double checked that. Richmond win the dream time by five points. Hawthorne versus West Coast. Ugh. Anyway, Collingwood too good there as well. Um, what other thrillers do we have here? Fremantle still keep that win because it's seven points. Same with the Giants at GMHBA. That is a great win. They, they have a good record there, don't they? Uh -huh. The next one that qualifies, well, it's these two, which we now have to make draws. So the Giants and Richmond actually draw here. That's interesting. And then Essendon and North Melbourne also draw. So that still puts North Melbourne in last place, but... Who knows what's going to happen there? Saints too good for Sydney. Gee, the Saints actually have a pretty good record against Sydney now. Think about it. They beat them this year too, didn't they? Adelaide Hall or oh, West Coast. Oh, again, another thriller, but we'll think we'll just leave that one. Uh, now, ha, now Collingwood actually get one back here. So maybe this whole narrative about close games, we'll see. Obviously, I think some of them were in finals, but we'll see how the rest of the season goes. So Melbourne actually lose this game by two points to Collingwood. I don't actually remember that game. 205 to 34. It sickens me that I even have to scroll past that. God damn you, Eagles. Uh, Collingwood, there again, Adelaide pinch one back for the second time in one season. Two close losses to Collingwood, and then Collingwood move back down. So again, so far, Collingwood's still up there and probably still wins the flag either way if they're in top two. But again, I don't really remember how the end of the season went. Sydney versus Geelong is a draw. We will keep that. Again, I don't even remember that game. It's funny how quickly you can forget some of these results. Essendon, well, they get two here. This was the Dan Houston after the Siren game, wasn't it? What a beauty that was. Um, but Essendon prevail. They get two wins over Port Adelaide in this hypothetical scenario. So where do they go? Back into 11th there. So they're a bit up and down, the Dons here. Melbourne versus GWS. God, again, I don't remember this game particularly well, but what a stinker fest. You can just tell 45 to 47. My God, but the D's prevail by four points here. Collingwood versus Bulldogs. So again, it's a close game, but um, you, you can't reverse that result. Sydney over the Bulldogs becomes the Bulldogs winning this game by four points. Now, they narrowly missed out on finals. It'll be interesting to see if they bounce in. Adelaide are in the eight as it currently stands. Melbourne here lose to the Brisbane Lions. Uh, yes, this was Melksham, wasn't it? I remember this game. That was an absolute ripper as well. So Mel uh, Brisbane actually get one back here and now move to a pretty comfortable uh, lead at top spot. Richmond and Hawthorne here. I feel like Richmond were involved in a lot of close games. So Hawthorne get another win here by five points. Where are the Hawks now? They are still exactly the same position, but with three extra wins. That's weird, that that glut of 10 wins here, and then you got the bottom two fart teams. Collingwood over Port here. Uh, yeah, did, was this something to do with Elliot? Did Elliot kick a winner late? Either way, Collingwood won a ripping game there. Now Port Adelaide prevail by four points. Melbourne over the Crows. So the Crows get one back. They might be actually the biggest winners in this video, certainly so far. They are up into seventh place on the back of winning the close games they lost. Collingwood versus Carlton. Carlton actually won that game. Uh, Fremantle beat Geelong at GMHBA. That's right, Jersey wouldn't shut up about that. The Bulldogs now get this win. Uh, I feel like the Giants came back from like five goals down to win this game. So let's say the Bulldogs uh, get their shit together in the last minute and win. Sydney over Essendon. Essendon now get this win here. Where does that leave them? In ninth. So again, a bit of improvement. Sydney have actually, 
Despite going up at first, they now back outside the eight, and they finished eighth in the end. West Coast versus North Melbourne at uh, Perth Stadium or Optus Stadium. Now this actually becomes a North win. I actually forgot this game even happened. So either way, no, no, that actually puts North ahead of West Coast. So there you go. Maybe it does even out in the end. Essendon, oh, Essendon versus West Coast. I do remember this game. I really wanted to win it. So maybe, maybe not. I spoke to its own West Coast win this game by five points. Hawthorne too good for Collingwood there. That was a big upset at the time. Uh, but it was a pretty comfortable victory in the end. We do move to Fremantle versus Brisbane at Optus Stadium. Fremantle instead win this game by three points, and they move up to ninth, which is an improvement. Collingwood were too good for the Cats here by eight points, so they just survived so far. Brisbane versus Adelaide now becomes a draw, so there we go. How does that affect the ladder? Not so convincingly. Oh, except Adelaide up into fifth. My God, maybe Adelaide is the biggest beneficiary of this particular hypothetical. Carlton versus Melbourne. Again, Melbourne's probably been involved with more uh, more close games in this video, both positive and negative, than Collingwood have. They get a win here, and they're still third. Oh, God, skip past this derby. Again, I forget that happened. Uh, Hawthorne versus the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs win by three points. And again, again, this is the second video in a row where the Bulldogs would have finished much higher had they won close games. So maybe the, the narrative on them is that they need to get better in these games. Collingwood lost that convincingly by four points. Gold Coast versus Carlton is the next one we change. Gold Coast win that by two points. GWS versus Essendon, what a stunning result that was. Uh, 33 points, Adelaide versus Sydney. So Adelaide claim this back, they win this game by five points and they move into the top four. Wow, that is actually pretty interesting. Bulldogs versus West Coast, yeah, please don't take that one from us. That was a great win <laughs> considering the season we had. Collingwood, far too good for Essendon. Um, anything else here noteworthy in the final round? I don't think so. So maybe a lack of thrillers to end the year. I'm just going to double back and see if I missed any. I don't think I did. So if I'm not going crazy, let's have a look at the ladder. So Collingwood here in the top two, um, it's perhaps a bit of a uh, misconception that their ability to win close games was the difference between them being contender. Honestly, that version of Collingwood, had they finished eighth that year, they probably could have still won the flag. So in this scenario, they still finished top two. Um, we can consult the actual ladder. Where did Melbourne finish? They were still top four, weren't they? So Melbourne finished four. It cost them one spot, but Adelaide here is the biggest, biggest one, I think, for me. The biggest story out of here. Adelaide could have finished top four with better results in their close losses. When they finished 10th, um, and, you know, that Ben Keys goal at the end, or non-goal, was ultimately what cost them the top eight. Uh, where did the Bulldogs finish? They finished ninth last year, and they end up in sixth. So, again, second video in a row. That is the case. Fremantle, again, featured in the 2024 version for a team that could have jumped high. In fact, I think they might have been the biggest differentiator. The Bulldogs... Fremantle St Kilda, um, but Fremantle, I think, might have even finished second in the other video. I can't remember exactly, but Fremantle actually finished 14th, so they could have played finals. Carlton finished fifth. You could actually make the argument Carlton benefited more. Well, not benefited. I mean, they earned wins in those close games, right? But you know what I mean? The, the, the narrative around Collingwood winning close games, maybe it was actually true of Carlton. I do actually remember towards the end of the year, Carlton did have an amazing run in close games. So Richmond 11th, Geelong, Sydney. Sydney down to 14th. Wow. So it started, this video started with Sydney. Oh my God, GWS in 15th. Okay, so the two Sydney sides um, finished 8th. And seventh, um, Sydney, of, of course, got eliminated week one. GWS made it to a prelim final and were one point off a grand final. That's fascinating. Hawthorne had a couple of extra wins, but um, stayed in the same position. And North Melbourne would actually actually have Harley Reid. So, yeah, I think, again, some interesting permutations out of this. Very interesting. Let's go through a little finals series. I'd say you'd have to say Brisbane would have won that. Port Adelaide probably should have beaten Fremantle last year. This is last year's form, don't forget. St Kilda and the Bulldogs, that's probably a trickier one because um, the Bulldogs are better now, but last year St Kilda were good. I might give that to the Saints. Bulldogs fans are going to hate that. Collingwood would have beaten Melbourne uh, anyway. Did they play them in finals? I think they did. Uh, yeah, qualifying final, they beat them. Adelaide, oh, a showdown semifinal. That's what this cost us. Uh, Adelaide won both showdowns last year. Let's give it to the Crows. They made it to a prelim. My God. Melbourne should have beaten the Saints even though they actually went out in straight sets in real life. Brisbane versus Melbourne. Brisbane would have won that at the Gabba, and Collingwood beats Adelaide. Even though in this scenario, Adelaide's won two uh, games against the Pies. You've got to say the Pies at the MCG. So 
either way, the pies are the premiers. So it didn't really matter too much in terms of the eventual winner. And that probably was true in 2024 when the fifth place side wins the premiership, right? But there you go, guys. That's just a little bit of fun. Again, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. I hope I didn't miss any that time. It is very hard to do, but I did go through much more carefully this time. So I think I got it right. Let me know your conclusions from this. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you the next time. Cheers.